Hello, I'm Charles O'Dean, Director of Student Experience at Anglo Ruskin University, London. Starting your higher education journey can involve taking on board quite a lot of new information. Over the next 15 minutes, we are going to give you some information that you need to know about the context of your study with us. This information is important because it explains some of the rules and regulations that you are expected to follow during your studies. Even if you feel that these rules don't apply to you right now, they may do over the course of your degree. You don't need to write anything down. Everything that you're going to be told is covered in your student handbook and your course handbooks, both of which are on the VLE. By the end of this video, you will understand the timetabling system, understand the support that is available to you, understand attendance and behavioral requirements, understand the assessment process, understand the basis of academic misconduct and the penalties, and finally, understand what to do if you have a problem with assessment. You've been assigned a personal timetable that provides you with classes over two days of the working week if you're a traditional delivery student studying in the daytime, or across two evenings and weekends if you're a non-traditional delivery student. This timetable is fixed for your first semester, and if you're studying evenings or weekends, then it won't change in the future. If you're a daytime student, however, then you should expect that your timetable may change each semester. A two-day timetable is only given in the event that you have no retakes or resits that require attendance, and LLB students at level 5 and 6 study optional modules and as such can expect a three or four day timetable. Traditional delivery students are expected to manage other aspects of their lives, such as part-time work, around their university commitments. Two days a week is um, really um, helpful, so I'm able to um, still be able to um, um, look after my children and um, work part-time. The two days that I come to the university, I still have time to work as I work uh, part-time and then go to the gym and do my stuff, my activities, so it's, uh, it's really good and gives you time to do everything. When you begin your studies at ARU London, you are assigned a personal development tutor. This person is a member of academic faculty who has responsibility to ensure that you progress in your studies, as well as being someone who you can go to if you need support. We like to think of our personal development tutors as your academic parents. This means they're the person you can go to if you have problems that are affecting your studies, but also they're the ones who will be contacting you if we lose track of you or if your grades need improvement. Although your personal tutor will be looking out for you, it is worth stressing that university is not secondary school. Completing work, engaging in group activities, turning up on time, these are all down to you. When you're at school, you have to attend, but going to university is a choice. We want you to join us to study here, but there is no obligation for the university to continue to support a student who fails to engage in their studies. This means that if you do not attend your classes, or if you do not submit work, the university can withdraw you and your studies will come to an end. We collect a lot of data about things like student progression because we want to get good outcomes for all of our students. What that data shows us is, unsurprisingly, if you attend all your classes, you're very likely to come out with a good degree. But, also unsurprisingly, students who don't attend classes often fail whole modules. This is never a good outcome. We therefore ask that you arrive at your classes no later than 9.50. If you do arrive late for any reason, then please simply get seated and working as quickly and quietly as you can. Ultimately, there aren't many reasonable excuses for arriving late, considering that most people working around this area of London will get, be getting here at 9am, so getting in for 10 really shouldn't be that hard. On top of that, if you attend 90% or more of your classes during the semester, in addition to completing all of your assessments on time, then you become eligible for the transport bursary. This is a £250 payment that you receive at the end of term in order to help cover some of your travel costs as long as you've met the previously described criteria. I did ta um, take my uh, bursary uh, transport. Um, what did I do with it? I just spent it on the Christmas presents because it was uh, in that period when we received it. Uh, and I was doing like a Christmas shopping on Oxford Street. <laughs> 
I actually spend it. I just come from holiday. I went to um, Turkey, so um, I enjoy the 250. I'm going on holiday. Using the attendance card issued to you, tapping in and out of a classroom is the only way to register your attendance. If you attend but forget to register your attendance, your record will show that you are absent. You will also be recorded as absent if you fail to arrive for class or register your attendance after the first minutes of the session. This record cannot be amended, even if your tutor is willing to confirm that you were in attendance. On registering for your course, you're provided with a university email account with an email address in the following format name.surname at student.anglia.ac.uk We will only use this address for communicating with you and we will expect you to communicate with us using your student email address. Very importantly, the account for submitting your assignments, which is through Turnitin, will be linked to your student address. You must make a habit of checking your account regularly in order not to miss out on key information. As part of the facilities and services available to you here at ARU London, you have access to the Employability Scheme. We want students to leave their degree programs with more than just theoretical knowledge. We want you to be well-rounded, employable job candidates. The Employability Passport Scheme allows you to collect evidence of your employability learning. Topics include CV writing, interview preparation, and personal branding. Each time you complete a session, you'll collect knowledge and a stamp in your passport. These sessions run in room 406 at lunchtime between 1 and 1.30. Check the screens for information and collect a timetable from the eye center. We also offer industry exposure sessions at lunchtime in room 105, where people from industry come in to explain about what it's really like to work in a certain sector or how to take the steps to secure a graduate position. This timetable is available from the eye center as well. Once you fill your passport, you can sit for a mock interview with an academic and then you'll be eligible for the Employability Award and an ARU London hoodie. I've sat in a few sessions and again I take it back to meeting lecturers. You meet people who are actually employed in the industries and I actually got my current job through one of those. I got to meet the person who worked there. They were looking for a junior accountant. I got speaking with them. Turns out I was also looking for a project manager and I signed up with him. During your studies, you will have to undertake assessments in all of your modules. Each module will involve one or more elements of assessment. These can include coursework assignments such as essays, reports and presentations, or they could involve examinations. You will find out what is required of you for each module within the module guide for the subject and of course the lecturer will always outline the assessment requirements for that particular module. When it comes to assessments, there are strict rules that have to be followed. You must attempt all assessments for your module. If you do not attempt it, you will fail the element for that assignment. Failing one element can result in you failing the whole module. If you do not pass your modules, you may be required to resit the assessment, which means completing a new bit of work and even worse, if you fail on the reset, then you would be required to retake the module, which requires you to attend all of the classes again. The pass mark for any piece of work you do is 40%, but clearly, that should be regarded as a threshold and not a target. The first time a student fails a module, they have to complete what is known as a reset. This requires the student to complete a new assessment, however, if they have successfully completed it, the mark is capped at 40%. The second time a student fails a given module, they have to complete a retake. This requires the student to attend all of the classes again and to complete new assessments for every element of that module. The results are capped at 40% if the work is of passing standard. Clearly, it is important that you pass all of your assessments on the first attempt in order to maximize the grade that you finally leave us with. You will submit all written work online via an online system called Turnitin. Turnitin is a system that checks your work to see if you have copied it. If you copy from a book, from another student, the internet, etc., 
without indicating the source by using academic referencing, then you are guilty of committing an academic offence. You will be given guidance on how to use Turnitin and you can get assistance in this area within the Learning Resources Centre. You need to ensure that you submit all of your work on time as once the deadline is passed, you have a maximum of five working days to submit your work in what is called the late submission period. Any work submitted during the late submission period can only attract a grade of 40% if it is of passing standard. As long as you organize your time well, this should never be a problem for you. And really, late submission should be considered a last resort when things have gone badly wrong. You cannot afford to miss your deadlines. Despite that, we know that sometimes life throws things at you that you can't avoid. If you know that there's a problem that will stop you submitting your work, you are permitted to apply for an extension, but applying does not mean the extension will automatically be granted. When requesting an extension, you have to give valid reasons and provide suitable evidence to support your claim. Having a headache or going on holiday aren't going to win you an extension. An extension request must be made before the given deadline. You can't ask for an extension once you've missed the published deadline. If your request is approved, you'll have an extra five to 10 working days to complete the work. To make a request, please contact the ICE Centre on the ground floor of the Charterhouse building. Now, sometimes circumstances could prevent you from being able to submit, even if you had an extension. If you failed to submit your work, but had a serious life issue that meant that it wasn't your fault, you can apply to mitigate. To mitigate, you must complete a form available from the eye centre, and again, it must be supported by evidence from an official source. A panel make a decision about a mitigation claim, and if they agree that it's valid, the attempt is moved to the next assessment period. Note that, even if you mitigate, you still have to resit the assessment which means completing a new assignment paper or exam, usually in July. Please note that once you've made a claim to mitigate, you cannot withdraw the mitigation claim. Whilst we would like to be positive all of the time, we do unfortunately encounter cases where students have attempted to cheat the system. This is taken very seriously by the university. There are two main forms of academic offences, the first of which is plagiarism. Plagiarism is the theft of somebody else's academic work and you will learn about this in your first semester modules. It is a serious offence and the penalty is severe. If you commit two or more academic offences, you will be withdrawn from the university. Correct referencing must be employed and the expectation is that if you are a law student, you employ the use of the OSCLA method of referencing and if you're pursuing any other courses then the expectation is that you use the Harvard method of referencing. Another type of offence is called collusion. Collusion is the submission of work that is the result of a joint effort when the work should be that of your individual effort. To avoid this please make sure that you follow the instructions of your assignment brief very carefully. Collusion also covers the situation where it is discovered that a student has purchased an assignment. When your work has been marked, you'll have the opportunity to read the feedback that has been written on the script. It's important that you do this for each assignment, as the feedback will explain why you received the particular mark that you did and what you need to do to improve future work. Feedback on your work is provided through the Turnitin system. After you receive your grade, you can open the work on Turnitin to read the comments. It's easy and straightforward. Um, it's also really intuitive. And um, it's like we can um, check the similarity. It's a really, really helpful tool. You will first receive a provisional mark. And those are checked internally and externally by an academic team, which later means the mark becomes official after it has been approved by the University Award Board. While you can ask a tutor to look at the marked work and to explain the feedback to you if you're unsure about it, it's not possible to ask for a remark or to challenge the grade that you've been awarded. eVision is Anglia Ruskin University's central system for students. You will have been sent a personal code to gain access to eVision in an email. 
Your approved examination results will be published on AIU's eVision website, which will give details of your exam grades and whether you need to resit or retake a module. It will also let you know the outcome of a mitigation claim if you have to make one. In terms of progression, undergraduate students need to obtain at least 90 credits from the 120 credits that they are studying in each year of study. Please read your course handbook and module guides very carefully to learn how many credits each module you are taking is worth. In the event that after a resit attempt a student is still trailing one module, they are permitted to progress to the next level. However, the result of that may require them to attend four days per week as opposed to two days a week. It is best to try and avoid that situation. There is only one opportunity in the year to resit failed modules and this occurs in July, regardless of when you set the module. In order to ensure that students and staff are all respected and that Anglia Ruskin University London is treated as a place of professionalism and business, we require the following. You need to switch off or silence your mobile phone in class unless specifically told that you don't have to. Don't disrupt other students' learning, for example, getting up to charge your phone in the middle of a class. Do not misuse your university attendance card. Doing so is a very serious offence which can lead to expulsion. You must behave responsibly and professionally at all times, both at the university and in the wider community. You must treat all university staff and fellow students with respect. You must behave as you would in a professional position. You must pay attention to the lecturer in class. Don't conduct conversations with other students during lectures unless you're invited to do so. Do not repeatedly leave and re-enter a classroom, which is in session as this is disruptive. Do not consume food during your lessons. Notify the information centre of any changes to your contact details and keep your personal development tutor informed of any difficulties you may be having which are affecting your studies. Help keep your environment tidy by disposing of litter in the bins provided. Do not smoke in or immediately outside the university premises and if you do smoke, dispose of stubs responsibly. Take care of all university equipment, resources, facilities and buildings. The rules and regulations discussed here may all sound a bit serious, but it's important that you understand your rights and responsibilities so that you get the most out of your time here. We hope that you have an enjoyable, productive experience studying at Anglia Ruskin University London and we look forward to seeing you at graduation in a few years time.